everybody, this is Scott from the dailyexposition.com. I'm bringing you a review of another program that is fairly new-ish, but it's actually a remake of an older program that I looked on called Baidu PC Faster. Now this is known as Baidu Cleaner. It is a new program that is fairly interesting to say the least. It has a very minimalistic user, user interface. Only comes with really three options with the toolbox with some other features which are actually already built into the other parts of the program. So it's kind of redundant compared to the old program, but it's a lot cleaner and easier to use. A um, couple of things I will note that there's not very many settings that need to be changed. And they added a new feature known as Clean Genius, which I'll go into. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at is just the general full clean option. It's a simple scan, it runs through your computer, and with all these scanners that we tell you there's all these junk files, privacy items, memory and clean, and startup items that need to be checked. So let's, I'm going to quickly just jump into what some of these are. Junk clean is anything that's on your form, on your computer temp, in the form of temp files or cached files, or in, some, in this case as well, registry files. Um, it's basically just your traditional scanner will run through, check re registry items that are slowing down your PC, and while it doesn't actually do much, unless your computer's years and years, has years and years of use, you won't see much of a difference cleaning out your registry because it's meant to be very resilient. And on modern PCs with a SSD like my laptop here, you won't experience much of a slowdown. There's application junk files, which is just commonly logs, uh, logged files, caching, things in that nature. They're not necessarily slowing down your PC, and they're going to come back if you use those programs. But if you've had a lot of programs in the past that you've uninstalled, or you just went through and uninstalled a bunch of programs, running one of these tools can at least help clean up any remnants from the uninstallation. The website junk file is honestly your browser history and cached files. System junk files, Windows logs, temporary files. Um, you really don't need to change any of this. You can just leave it at the default settings when you're doing your scan. Uh, registry files, honestly, you can leave this. If you want to, you can check these things, but there's no real reason to. And if you want to check all of them, you just click the check mark. Privacy clean is honestly just the removal of cookies and cached files as well as history on the browser. A quick note is if you're using the browser, the option will not actually be checked. In fact, it doesn't by default clean your browser history or clear your passwords. So you can, if you're running a browser and you're using Google Chrome, say most of the time, but you've had a bunch of other ones like Opera, Internet Explorer, Firefox installed, this will clean those up, but without touching the one that you currently have running, just to make sure that you actually have the browser open like I do at the bottom. Memory clean, okay. This is taking the kind of the concept of a Android device most commonly. It's kind of like a, any of the Android apps, antiviruses, most of them come with some kind of tool to free up memory. They don't really work. It can help temporarily if a task gets too big. Uh, for instance, I have a website which I am have another YouTube channel for and it's all about making videos of how people can make money through various sites. I found that running a tool like this passively in the background through advanced system care, it'll automatically clear the memory and therefore the total RAM usage from flash actually goes down and the browser is less likely to stall. However, for 99.9% .9 of use cases, this does absolutely nothing. but you know, it doesn't necessarily cause any harm because any service that's still needed will start back up on its own. And that brings you to the next part, which is the startup clean. This is only handy if you have a lot of, if you have a fresh computer out of the box and you don't know what you actually need. These programs typically have a lot of solid recommendations of programs that are not necessarily needed on boot up. Particularly, you buy a fresh new laptop from HP. You're going to have some kind of annoying bloatware installed on it. It's just going to happen. This will go through and find things that are not necessarily needed on startup and remove them. And of course, you can do this on your own through the task manager. But if you're unsure and not very technically savvy, it's a simple one-click solution. 
System optimization basically does tune-ups in its own world. It just changes common things. I can't even see them anymore. I threw this on and ran it once. I, I've noticed no difference, honestly, except for in the boot-up time. But it makes small changes to your network and your, it makes small changes to how Windows caches certain files, the cache duration, and how your SSD handles files. You won't notice that much of a difference from this section, but it doesn't necessarily cause any harm from my experience. And the plug and clean will remove any junk that's installed, ask toolbars, any toolbars that are not necessarily needed. And then you just go through and you click clean and you're done. Now. This is the more interesting part. The Clean Genius, which is new to this program, actually functions as a passive background monitor, which basically means it just sits there and watches your computer. Now, the only thing I found extremely useful is if you ever go to download.com or any download site, they're always going to bundle crap, or that, as I have dubbed it, crapware with whatever you're trying to download. It's not needed, but they bundle it so that way they can make money on each download. This tool actually has a tool that's automatically built in and works. When you download a program, let's just say you're downloading um, Defraggler or something of that nature from download.com. You go there, you download it, and then you didn't read the instructions. And I've had experiences with this personally where I've clicked the uncheck button to not install the program, but I hit accept. So even though it's not checked, I hit accept. So that means it's still going to install which is incredibly misleading. But then you have to wait and then you have to go through it and install it. This will just do that for you. If you go through and you're installing Defraggler, but then you get the Ask Toolbar for some reason, it'll remove that. Startup Clean, uh, basically if you add a new program, it automatically adds startup to your startup folder, which a lot of programs do. This will check and then it will uh, either prompt you to disable it or keep it enabled if it deems that it's um, recommended. Um, recycle bin deep clean. This is this does nothing. It, virtually, it does nothing. Files can leave remnants in your recycle bin, but if it's in the recycle bin already and it's been cleaned, they're gonna be written over eventually, so it doesn't really matter. Junk files deep clean just means hey, you have four gigs worth of space that's in your browser. Do you need this much? And then it'll either prompt you to clean them or to remove them or whatever it recommends. And then you just click clean and then it goes away. The browser junk clean, exactly the same thing as the furnished one. And the uninstallation. This is a common tool with a lot of programs that help you uninstall things. It basically just checks when you've uninstalled a program. It runs through and just says um, it left some registry keys. Because programs in Windows aren't required to have a very good cleanup job. Uh, most commonly, you'll see this with a lot of antivirus programs, is Windows programs in particular are extremely guilty of not removing their remnants in the event of you reinstalling them. But if you're not installing something like I am most of the time, you're not going to come back to it. And if you are, you don't need those files. So that just helps clean you up. I have not found a single program that after a program is successfully uninstalled, it will remove the empty folders that it leaves laying around. I don't know why nobody can get that right, but say you install a program or a game like Minecraft, and you put it in a Minecraft folder, and you uninstall it, and then that folder that's titled Minecraft is still going to be there. This program is also guilty of this, but if anyone has found one that will do that, that would be great for me to look at. And then the toolbox. This is basically just a bunch of random junk. You have your software uninstaller, it's just basically, it helps you uninstall programs in a neater user interface. Um, nothing to really worry about or use in here. Startup Manager is nice because it helps you find startup services, Windows services tasks, and it gives you recommendations based off of it knows the program. Typically, if it doesn't, it just tells you to maintain it because it doesn't know what it is. If it knows what the process is, then it'll either tell you to auto start it, it'll tell you whether it's required, which honestly, your audio manager should be enabled. But that's okay and it'll just give you quick recommendations um, naturally of course it always tells you that your that its software should be maintained the way it is and to disable Google Chrome which I agree with because Google Chrome is kind of a pain on startup it'll go through your Windows services and schedule tasks and you can look through the history of when I disabled Baidu cleaner but then it was re-enabled 
Large Files Cleaner honestly just scans your whole disk for large files. This is only useful if you're in an environment where you're using a lot of media production. If you're creating a lot of videos or you're creating a lot of images and you do artistic things, this can help you find and clean them up. But if you're a heavy gamer, do not use this feature because 9 out of 10 times you're going to have some large data file or DLL file for the game and it's going to pop it up and it's just going to be useless. Essentially, if, if you're doing this kind of work where you're creating large files for media, whether it's music or images or videos, you're not going to be disorganized to where you couldn't find them and get rid of them on your own. So while this is a neat feature, I've never personally used it myself. Facebook repair is stupid. It's not useful. <laughs> um, it, it's only helpful if for some reason you can't access Facebook, which is common with many types of malware infection, where it'll hijack your DNS or hijack the, your browser and redirect you to somewhere else. This is common when somebody infects your computer and then they'll redirect it to a page that looks similar. There was a common Gmail hack um, earlier this year where users were redirected to a fake Google sign-in page that was identical to the actual sign-in page except for the URL and the address bar. So nine times out of ten people were not realizing that it was a fake Google sign-in. System repair is an extra tool and I've never had to use that so we're just going to download it real quick. It increases your ski. So here, we're going to run this and just see what happens. So it's basically a malware scanner. The most the, this is just basically their scanner. So it's not really system repair. It's basically just running the Baidu antivirus cloud scanner. There's no reason to use this if you already have a built-in antivirus. It's just a way for them to get more users on their program. And turn your PC into a Wi-Fi hotspot. This is actually very interesting. I'm going to download this real quick. So, we're unable to create a Wi-Fi hotspot. Now, this computer is actually already connected to Wi-Fi. And this doesn't work. Sorry, unable to create a Wi-Fi hotspot. Please disconnect the wireless network adapter and use a wire cable to connect to the internet. This makes zero sense. Basically, if you're on a wireless network, you can only you have to be connected to your router, your switch, or for some reason, if you wanted to, directly into your modem, and then it could turn into a Wi-Fi hotspot. This is completely worthless in 99% of cases, nor would I recommend you ever using your own PC as a Wi-Fi hotspot when you can go and pick up an access point for 20 bucks, 30 bucks for your home, and that's all you would ever need. In fact, if you wanted, there's a lot of carry-on ones that you can bring. Some of them are actually the small ones, the USB. There's no reason to use a Wi-Fi hotspot. In addition, you have to already be in a situation where your computer's connected to an access point. So, interesting idea, but it's kind of worthless. Your computer isn't built to handle traffic that way. And in addition, it's not really worth using. If you're in a situation where you only have a wired connection for X reason, and for some reason you need to use your phone, I could see this being used, but your computer's not built to handle it. Well, it could be, but you don't have the proper tools or software to manage incoming traffic in that way. And if you were creating your own router or your own access, well, it would be, or your own access point, this, this is a little different. Essentially, this tool's overall worthless but while it's interesting i can never find a use case where i ever had to use a hotspot program for my computer because if i'm working out in the field or i'm at a coffee shop they have wi-fi if i'm at home there's wi-fi there's never been a use case where i've explicitly needed to have my computer become a wi-fi hotspot so while a cute idea 
it just fa it just fails when it comes to actual practicality. And that's truly it. Overall, the program has a clean user interface. It's super simple to use. It makes some makes the overall general claims that every other program that works on your PC does. It'll clean up your files and make your computer XYZ faster. The only thing that I do applaud it for is it has a very interesting clean genius section and the startup tool I found to be overall useful. If you are more technically savvy, you don't need to use this. If your computer is running old though, it's running slow and you've had it for a few years, slap the program on there and try to see what it does. And that's it. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comment section below. Also check out the website where I have the full written review on this subject as well. And the video will be at the end of it. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.